Okay. Uh, this is garage number three for me with Rust Bowl. We have a couple of challenges going on here. It's nowhere near as warm as it was when I did the other two. So I'm running that heater, which I'll shut off for now. Most of the heaters I use are kerosene heaters. The challenge here is uh, it's a solvent-based paint. And I don't know what the solvent is, but it off-gasses quite quickly. So the downside to that is with uh, an open flame heater, it'll guaranteed blow the place up. So I switched to an electric heater for here. That just meant wiring it in. That one's from Home Depot. I think you can get them elsewhere, Amazon. It does a decent job. The temperature today is actually 60, so um, very warm compared to the 19 degrees we had for a while. The floor has been pretty warmed up. I've been running that heater for a while. I'm just giving you an idea of what the floor looks like now. And that's about it. There's some cracks and junk like that. Same routine as the other one. I'll be using leftover rust bullet, which is a little challenge. This stuff is a good 60 days old, which is probably way too old for it. So I don't have high expectations for this, but it's left, so I'm gonna try it. Uh, my plan is to cut in, so I'll just cut in lightly with a brush and a roller, and then uh, go crazy, get as far as I can with the about four gallons I have. Those are two pickle jars. I'll come back after the first coat. All right, this is garage number three, coat two. Let's try. Uh, and I only have enough material to do two coats on this garage. And that's because this was like the bonus. This garage doesn't get a boatload of use. Uh, and I wanted to use up what I had left of the rust bullet. So I threw down two coats over here and I had just enough for two coats. You can see, let's see if it's showing up. In, you can see brush marks and junk like that. A little bit, roller marks. Here's how cracks fill. And they don't. This floor uh, really didn't follow any of the guidelines. So don't use this job as a judge of how it comes, because I don't know how well it's going to come. I did not power wash this floor. I didn't etch it. I didn't do anything. And while they don't say you have to etch it, I think the power washing would have been helpful. All this got was a broom sweeping and uh, blew it out with a backpack blower and proceeded to cover. There's a big hole. It, it covers it nice. It obviously doesn't fill it. It doesn't fill anything, even the tiniest of cracks. There's a tiny crack. For comparison, here's my finger. Um, I used epoxy to uh, epoxy patch repair to fill these cracks and then um, after that all oozed in and I went through two cans of it I gave up on that over here and then this is a concrete cork so let's see how that does patch repair I forget which one I'll look it up and let you know it'll be down in the description here's more of the epoxy patch repair uh, I should have ground it down a little bit but this is garage number three, and I'm not really caring that much. So two coats. Uh, big thing here, it's the middle of winter. Well, it's February. And it's cold here. No insulation. So, and this is a, an outbuilding, so it tends to get cold. I used one of these heaters. Most of my heaters are kerosene. Uh, that won't work with this stuff, unless you want a big flame ball. So this is a... I think they call it a commercial heater or a building heater. It's good for if you're doing construction work and it's great for this. It provides a steady warm heat, not hot, just uh, warm. It's nice because if you get too hot a heat, so for example, the kerosene, they'll throw almost flame out the front and this area right in front then gets incredibly hot, but an area over here doesn't. Uh, this throws out more uniform heat. I'll show you what it sounds like when it's on has a thermostat on it. That's about how much noise it makes. 
it's not really offensive. Uh, you can easily talk over it. And what it's doing is it throws out, it never gets red hot in there. It just throws out warmth. It easily warms up this room though. And it's kept it warm. Temperature outside is in the 40s. Uh, and even over here, it's still, I mean, it's not hot on the floor, but it's not ice cold either. That's the story, two coats for this one. Oh, something to know if you're doing any of these jobs. So you're probably watching this video. This is my third garage, third video. When you put it down, you must recoat within, I think, 12 hours. So you gotta buy enough material to cover yourself just in case. So based on that, I bought 10 gallons, so two five gallon pails. That was to originally cover a 32 by 24 floor and then follow that up by a 150 square foot floor. So I thought if I had anything left, I'd use it on this one. This place is, I think, 24 by, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, by, I don't know what it is. Is it about 16 bays there? It's about 16 feet. That's it. Any questions on this one? It covers stains the same as it did on the other ones. Uh, the only difference you're seeing in color is because this floor is so, so heavily textured. It's more pockmarked than any floor I did. Uh, not sure why that is. It looks like it's been severely etched, but no, it's just the, full, the core of the floor. So any colors you're seeing, like there, that's not so much See, it goes away as we change the angle. It's, it's not so much brush and roller marks. It is uh, more the texture of the floor showing up. So for example, that is just a difference in, I put a little patch there. And again, this heater's a godsend. But the big grief with that, uh, it doesn't run on regular 110. You're going to need to run a special outlet for it. So if you have some electrical abilities, that's helpful. Third floor. I'm happy with all three. They covered well. They clean the place up and they give you a pretty smooth surface to uh, paint off. So, uh, I'm sorry, smooth surface to brush. Uh, we'll see how it holds up.